Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we will be diving into an exciting topic uh, for all the tech enthusiasts uh, that we have out there. So if you're looking to stay ahead in the uh, DevOps game uh, in 2024, then you're in the right place. Now in this session, we will be looking at some of the top DevOps tools that you should learn and you should uh, upskill uh, in 2024 that are uh, that will be helpful um, uh, with your uh, work as well as your career growth. Now, before we jump into the tools, let's quickly talk about why staying updated with the latest DevOps tools is uh, crucial. Now, if you're new to DevOps, then DevOps is all about efficiency, collaboration and uh, automation. So, you know, increasing the efficiency of your team, collaborating with other teams and then automating the manual work as much as possible. So the right tools can make all the difference in streamlining your workflows and taking your projects to the next level. So, you know, choosing the right tools, um, uh, the right automations that you want to do that can really help to improve your uh, project. So the first tool that we have is your version control system. Now, any project we take version control system is something that is very commonly used and whenever we talk about your version control system, Git is the tool that we have. So kicking things off with the foundation, Git is a must for your version control system. So whenever we talk about uh, implementing a version control system, Git should be your go-to tool and we can use this to uh, manage your uh, code and uh, collaborate with other teams. So this is the backbone of collaborative software development. So if you want to have an STLC, collaborative STLC, then Git should be your first preference when it comes to your version control system. Next up, we have your CI CD. So CI CD is your continuous integration and continuous uh, pipeline. Now, for any seamless integration and deployment, Jenkins uh, continues to shine. So whenever we talk about your CI CD tool, creating pipelines, automation pipelines, Jenkins uh, has been the uh, go-to tool for integration with other tools and automating your uh, deployments. However, you should keep an eye on GitLab, CI CD and GitHub Actions for the integrated solutions. So GitLab and GitHub Actions have been gaining popularity. Uh, many uh, projects are trying to implement uh, this as part of their uh, CI CD. So here I have a, a Google trend for the past one year. So this is basically a comparison between your GitLab, CI CD, Jenkins and GitHub Actions. So your GitLab has been gaining popularity when it comes to your uh, CI CD integrations. However, personally, I think Jenkins is uh, a really good tool when it comes to your CI CD and uh, I work a lot on uh, the Jenkins creating various uh, pipelines for our automations and then we also have GitHub Actions which can be used for your integration purpose. But again, it really comes down to your choice, what you're comfortable with. But this is the Google trend that we have for the past one year in terms of your CI CD. Uh, the next we have is your configuration management and infrastructure as code. Now, configuration management is uh, uh, used whenever we want to manage your uh, remote machines. And in that sense, we have Ansible. So Ansible has been the go-to tool when it comes to managing the configuration and automating the tasks on the remote machines. We have other tools like Chef, Puppet, Solstack, but Ansible has been the most popular tool that you should definitely um, uh, learn when it comes to uh, being a DevOps engineer. And in terms of your infrastructure as code, Terraform uh, uh, wins by a, a large margin. So infrastructure as code is crucial, right? So uh, in today's uh, market, automating your infrastructure setup has been a, a crucial uh, requirement. And when we talk about setting up your infrastructure using code, Terraform uh, has to be your go-to tool for provisioning your infrastructure by using your code. So we can use this Terraform to uh, provision your uh, infrastructure on the AWS platform or the Azure or the GCP platform or other platforms as well by making use of your infrastructure as code. So 
if you're on cloud then terraform should be your go-to tool when it uh, uh, comes to managing your infrastructure by using your code so again here is a comparison now this is for your con configuration management so that's a comparison between ansible chef and uh, puppet so the blue graph that you see that's your ansible so like i said ansible has been the go-to tool when it comes to configuration management um, because your ansible uh, follows your uh, push based architecture so we have to push the scripts to the remote machines uh, your chef is also uh, popular however when compared to ansible ansible wins and then we also have your puppet so you can again you can choose based on your requirement based on your use case but i would definitely go with ansible when it comes to the configuration management and when it comes to your infrastructure code here's a comparison between your terraform uh, pulumi and cloud formation again we have many other tools but like i said terraform has been the most popular tool when it comes to your uh, uh, managing your infrastructure using your code so uh, your terraform wins by a uh, long uh, margin and we have pulumi as well now pulumi is uh, good uh, if you're a developer and you want to leverage your existing programming knowledge to uh, uh, set up your infrastructure using code however i would still stick with terraform for how easily we can manage the infrastructure and also the code is not very complex so if you're looking to learn terraform i have a, i have a playlist in my uh, channel you can definitely uh, have a look at that i've covered almost everything that you uh, need to get started with uh, uh, managing your infrastructure on aws so that's especially for aws so i've covered everything from basics to installation to how you can um, create the infrastructure on the aws platform next up we have your containerization and orchestration now uh, microservices is something that has gained a lot of popularity uh, uh, containerizing your applications right so in that sense we have your uh, docker so docker continues to be the go-to tool when it comes to containerization so creating your uh, images your container images docker has been the most popular tool so containerization with docker has been a, a really a game changer for everyone so whenever we talk about uh, uh, creating custom images for uh, containers docker is the tool uh, that we can definitely uh, use and then in terms of orchestration we have kubernetes all right so kubernetes again it continues to be the go to tool when it comes to orchestration so managing your uh, containers high availability load balancing uh, all those things can be achieved with your uh, kubernetes so kubernetes is still the king of the hill when it comes to uh, orchestrating your container so whenever we talk about your containerizations and orchestrations docker and kubernetes should be your um, go to tool and again here i have a comparison google trend for the last one year that's between docker kubernetes and red hat openshift so docker should be your tool when we talk about creating your custom images and then kubernetes should be our choice uh, in terms of creating the cluster running the containers managing the containers and a uh, uh, lot of other things so orchestration kubernetes should be your choice next up we have your monitoring and logging so any applications we take monitoring is a very important aspect of that application so the same thing we have in your devops as well so in terms of your monitoring and logging we have prometheus now prometheus is your data source so it helps us to continuously collect the data from different different systems it could be your performance of the system and then all this information will be stored in a database it's a time series database so for monitoring prometheus should be your go-to uh, toolkit so you know if you are looking at using a data source to fetch the data from your system then prometheus should be your choice and then for uh, displaying that information whatever the information that you're collecting from prometheus if you want to visualize that data we have your grafana so grafana allows us to visualize the data that we are collecting from the data source which in this case will be your prometheus 
So Grafana excels in creating interactive dashboards for the various metrics that you're going to collect from Prometheus. So, you know, uh, your Grafana is mainly a visualization tool. So maybe if you want to visualize the CPU utilization, the memory utilization, any information that you want to visualize, Grafana should be your choice. And here's a comparison that I have. Now, this is between Prometheus, uh, InfluxDB and Graphite. So this is the data source. So we have different different data sources. So uh, I've taken three examples and Prometheus um, uh, has been the go to tool for uh, for the past one year when compared to Influx, TP and Graphite. So I will definitely uh, look to uh, upskill myself in Prometheus. And then for the visualization, we have uh, Grafana, we have Datadog and then we have Kibana. And again, your Grafana has a better integration with uh, Prometheus. So if you're using Prometheus, then we would definitely go with your uh, Grafana. But again, remember, all this will come down to your requirement, your project requirement, and then your skill sets as well. But I would definitely look at learning Grafana in, in 2024. Next, we have your cloud platforms. Now, any applications, any infrastructure that we take as of now, uh, many of them are implementing cloud or they've already moved to cloud if not they're implementing cloud as part of their infrastructure so cloud platform plays a very important uh, uh, role um, if you're looking to become a, a devops engineer so in terms of cloud platforms we have aws we have azure and then we have gcp the three most popular platforms that we have and you should be looking forward to learn uh, one of this in 2024 so Cloud proficiency, that's a must if you're looking to become a DevOps engineer. And then we have AWS Azure and GCP. And these are the major players that you should be familiar um, uh, when it comes to uh, being a DevOps engineer. Now, you don't have to know all the three platforms, but at least one, you should be uh, very proficient. You should be an expert at it. So all the three platforms can be used to uh, set up the infrastructure on the cloud right but uh, when it comes to the comparison so we have aws azure and gcp and again aws has uh, been the uh, in demand tool for the past one year and uh, i um, i continue i will continue to or rather we will continue to see that next year as well so i would definitely um, look at upskilling myself in aws if not azure so either aws or azure uh, but personally, I would stick with um, AWS and then GCP. That's going to uh, take some time before uh, uh, it gains uh, popularity. Next up, we have your uh, source code hosting. Now, source code hosting is used whenever you want to manage your code. You want to manage a central repository for your uh, developer. So we need a source code hosting for that. All right. So in terms of that, we have your GitHub, we have GitLab and we have your Bitbucket, which provides you with excellent platforms for collaboration. So if you have a team of uh, developers who are working on an application and if you want to collaborate with this uh, developers, you want to maintain a central repository, you want to maintain a source code hosting and you can choose uh, these options um, uh, in terms of your source code hosting. And again, here's the comparison that we have so we have github gitlab and bitbucket and github again has be should be your go-to tool when it comes to your source code hosting uh managing your uh, source code in a central repository github should be your choice again this is a, a trend for the last one year and i would definitely look at learning github um, in 2024 the last thing that i have is your scripting languages now you cannot do any automations without the scripting language, right? So we need to learn the scripting languages as well in, in order to do the automations on the various platforms. So if you're on the Linux platform, then we should definitely look at learning Bash. So Bash is the default shell for your Linux and Unix operating systems, making it essential for scripting in a Unix environment. So if you're working on the Linux machines then uh, you will uh, need to learn the uh, bash scripting or shell scripting to automate your tasks on the linux platforms and then we have your python so python is it's a versatile scripting language used for automation web development and many more things and if you're on the windows platform then powershell is what uh, we would uh, look at so powershell is a 
task automation framework which is mainly used for managing your windows environment so if you're on the linux platform um we, you can go with bash if you're on the windows platform you can go with powershell and if you want a combination like you know uh, uh, I, either linux or windows then definitely python is something that we can leverage so we can write python script for the linux platform we can also use python script for the windows platform so python is a tool which has been very popular in terms of uh, scripting languages automating your work so here's a comparison between python javascript and uh, ruby and python continues to be popular uh, when it comes to uh, automation uh, writing automation scripts automating your uh, tasks python um, uh, continues to be very popular and there you have it the must know uh, devops tools for uh, 2024 now remember the tech landscape is dynamic so stay curious keep learning and adapt to new tools as they emerge now remember whatever i've covered here this is more from a personal perspective i you know if uh, i'm looking at being a devops engineer i would definitely um, uh, look at learning these tools to uh, be a devops engineer if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit that notification bell happy coding and i'll see you in the next one